What's up everybody, Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Starbound. Uh, when we left off in the last episode, we were working on kind of redecorating the ship and doing some stuff and things here. Um, and it's going pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we've got our uh, agricultural stuff moved over here. We've got another set down here with some more... Uh, did I never replant these? Core creep. I don't think I did. Let's see. They should work. Nope. Okay. So I th Oh, that's right. I ran out of water. I think if I raise this up to where um, this dirt level is, it should be fine. Because it's basically four tiles of water. So that's one, two, three... And then you can see the fourth one is right where this platform is. So we should be... I've done it before with this height. So we should be able to do it. Um, but I had the water almost on to the next uh, thing. It was it was running right along there. So, uh, yeah. That's what... I forgot we ran out of water, though. That's pretty bad. Um, so as you can tell, I reconfigured this platform section a little bit since the last episode. And I also added some sprinklers. Uh, which are very conveniently watering everything. Now, these lights are preventing certain plants. Like, uh, this, I believe, is a grapevine? Let's go with that. And you can tell I couldn't put it here because of the light. So, we may have to... I think the next time these things grow and we, like, re-harvest them, what I'll probably end up trying to do is refocus all of my taller plants up here. And then things like um, carrots and possibly wheat one two three four not wheat um one two three four no so probably stuff like carrots um any basically smaller like pineapple and like smaller plants will probably go down here and the taller um more plant plants will end up going up top it's kind of what I'm thinking. But the uh, change to the platforms was a really good idea. It worked out really well that now when you jump and you land, you're on floor level. Um, so that's really cool. And you can kind of walk through here without any real issue. Um, there were a couple suggestions. One, uh, I kind of under am understanding now. I didn't quite get it when I first read the comment, but it's making more sense now that I'm looking at it. Uh, provided that it works... And that was to change the platform height to here, which that's kind of weird. Um, but with this, I don't think it'll actually overlap the storage crates, though. That's the only thing, because the comment was suggesting, it was by um, Jimmy Carter, uh, who was suggesting to do the platforms one lower, which would kind of bring the stairway type thing in line. Um, but it's the, the storage plat or the containers are counting as foreground so you can't actually build over top of them so unless i moved this crate it wouldn't really matter if i adjusted the platform so i think we're going to leave it the way that it is honestly um was also suggested to remove one of the storage locker rows which i don't know i kind of feel like if i remove these then it would kind of I'm kind of thinking if I remove them, then I would have to make more of a of a tunnel, not tunnel, but an aisle way going down kind of thing. Like, if I just take this one out, it feels kind of like, why are these over here now? And if I move them over there, then you're still halfway through the... It just... I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So I think for now we're going to leave it there. And unfortunately, uh, Photo Loss informed me that the storage crates, while they look cool, are actually not the most efficient of size versus storage. Like, they, they store a lot, but they take up a big storage space. Um, for example, these hold 64, but they take up a huge amount of space. Um, and I believe it's the storage storage lockers and each race gets one i'm pretty sure so i have an astro one there an industrial store i'm surprised i don't have like a human one because i thought they were supposed to be um unless i haven't found one yet let's, can i actually just search for human is that a thing 
No. Doesn't, I don't think I have any. Anyways, any storage locker, regardless of what type, is 48. Um, I don't know which one I like better. Wall mounted complete with hazard stripes and red light. Let's go with the industrial one for now. Um, so, for example, this one is a wall mount, but you can see the size comparison, if I close this window, that this holds 48 and these hold 64. So, when it comes to actual storage of things, these would be a better option. Especially, okay, here's another, here's another example. These hold 48. So if we get rid of one of these and throw this guy up on the wall, you can even see how much more efficient those would be over the lockers. So these actually are probably the best way to go. Um, but I'm not sure if I really need to be that efficient minded. Um, and I'm also not sure if it's worth the effort to reconfigure stuff and things. What I'm gonna do, I think, is just change this top layer and we're gonna play around with, um... Oh, I don't have room to pick that up. Um, well, that could be a problem. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I have colony deeds too, I totally forgot about that. Um, let's just place that guy up there for now. So what I'm going to do is make a few of these. Like, actually, let's see how many I think I might need. Because I have no idea. Um, hmm. Ooh, I could do it like this. That's a little bit more... How do I put it? Sym symmetrical? Let's go with that. Um... Actually, no, I got a better idea. Let's let's actually change the bottom row. And I will explain why in just a second. Because actually what it allowed me to do, that doesn't really matter, but it's fine. We'll put these back anyway. Uh, what it'll allow me to do is mess with the platforms a bit and see if I can adjust this more to my liking. Go away. Thank you. Um... And let's see, the ship lights would be... Eh. Actually, I don't want to do that because I'd like to actually put them... I'd like to put the platform right where the lights actually are. Mm, maybe I might even want it one lower. Though, if I have it one lower, then I don't know how to connect it up to this area. Um... Either that, or we could actually do a little bit of an upward angle towards the doorway and see what see what that does. Nope, not what I meant to do. Kind of what I meant to do, actually. There we go. You do something like that, and it has a little bit of an upward slant. Um, and then we could do... That's not a very... That's not a very big space to work with, though. Tell you what, I'm actually going to mess around with this for a minute, and I will be back in a second. Okay, so here's kind of the new storage room setup that I did, and I think I like it better overall. Somebody could probably do the math for me and figure out if it's actually more efficient or not. I'm sure if we crammed more of these together, it would end up being because of the space they take up, or rather what they don't take up. Um, but overall, I think I think that it'll work out a little bit in in the better long run type thing. Now, the one thing that I did not do is these backdrop things what i'd like to do is get them all to be this station support and right now they're railings here because i took the the railing out and replaced it with wall panel to make it look like it was one long flowing piece um but yeah i kind of like that overall i think it looks pretty cool and even when we walk away and our character light stops we get this cool little blue glowy thing which is cool uh one thing i didn't know Full disclosure is that with the painting tool, you can... Actually, I don't even know how to use this thing. Quick select with Y. 
Primary fire applies paint secondary. Oh, secondary changes color. Okay. And I guess clear. All right, let's test it up here. I, I guess clear is like the normal, right? That's that color. That's that color. That's actually kind of a color. It's hard to tell there, but it is a this metal actually has a little bit of a bluish color. And then if we do this, it paints everything back to default. Ooh, that's cool. So one of the things is that you can actually paint. Um, can you paint foreground? No, doesn't look like it. Yeah, no, but you can paint uh, background like this. Well, it kind of painted the foreground, I guess, but that's a platform. So it kind of lets things pass through it. Uh, but so anyways, we could even color code some of these areas and stuff like that if we wanted to. Um, like, just as a hypothetical, it'd be like... Oh! Wait, hold on. Hold on. Confusion. Stuff and things. No. Okay, I was thinking holding shift was, was making it paint the foreground. Uh, that is not the case. It was just painting the... Um, the background blocks behind the railing. But if we wanted to do something like this and say, okay, green is the agricultural stuff, you know, something like that, you could we could even paint that too, which is kind of cool. Now, I don't know what happens. Okay, it doesn't affect lights. I wasn't sure about that. I was kind of wondering if it would, like, change the color of the light or something. So that's a tool that I totally didn't even remember that was a thing. Um, you can also switch over the wiring stuff. Ooh, now this is getting into some stuff. <laughs> this is getting into some stuff. Uh, what's the controls for this? Quick select with T, build to place wiring between inputs. So all, all of these I think are inputs. I don't, yeah, you, I think red ones, if I remember correctly, red ones are actually the toggle and blue is like the connectors. Anyways, uh, this was a suggestion a while back that when you're in a village you can actually see uh, if anything is actually wired to anything. Ah, here's one. You can wire this to that. And then... Aha! So basically redstone, but like way easier to figure out. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, now the one thing is that's off. So, how do I turn you back on? I guess open that and then cut the wire? Yeah, okay. So, I could have a lot of fun. I, I forgot, not really forgot, but like I just didn't even realize how, how many of the things are actually connected to, um, or connectable. Like, for example, you could tie these torches... This is going to be funny. I I really probably shouldn't get into this because this is one of those black holes that just could... Um... <laughs> this is just so funny. Uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't mess around with that too much. Um... Cut all the wires. Yeah, so... Yeah, anyways, so that's some of the stuff and things, but uh, I'm thinking we had, let's see, we had 48, right, in the, um, in the lockers. We had two of those. We had 224s, which is another 48. So there's three of these, and then we had, <coughs> excuse me, then we had a 64. So technically... Laying them out in this spacious manner is less storage space. So that's something we should play around with too. That if, um, on a technical level, we actually haven't gained any storage. However, that's not true. Because we have four rows. And if I wanted to take these windows out, I'd have another entire row of 48. Where we only had three before. So we were losing rough math just off the top of my head. I'm thinking we lost about 24 slots per row 
by doing it this way, but we gained another row, which is at least two more 48 slots, so that kind of almost makes up for it. So technically, if we took these windows out, um, I think we can do that, right? Well, we can't really take them out, but we could cover them up, I guess. Uh, let me just print two more of those, just to... Somebody will have to double check my math, because I'm not looking at a calculator right now, and those numbers hurt my head. Um, rough math, though, I'm thinking we're losing 24 per, uh, per row at that set. So as long as we had another full row, we would have gotten... Let's see, 24 three times, that's that's two lockers and a half. So as long as we have four, uh, we would actually be gaining more. Oh, well, let me put it there because of the window. That's dirty. See that? Ah, well, eh. <laughs> let me guess. Oh, you can cover up the entire window doing that. <gasps> oh knew that I did not. So the only reason that these worked is because I covered them up with glass. Oh. Okay. So technically speaking, we should have gained a few more slots that way, I think. I'm guessing we've gained about 24 slots that way, if my math is right, which... <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm, just, I'm just doing that off the top of my head. Um, so yeah. Is why the paint tool? Yes. Let's just repaint this. That was just an example. So anyways, we could do it that way and keep that as a storage unit. And it is a bit more easy to navigate. Like, you can just run through here, grab whatever you want. You're not having to jump around or click on things. And it fixed the uh, pathway here. That the only spots that are a little stubby are at a doorway, which isn't going to matter. So, overall, I may actually like this better. I, I, I might actually be feeling this a bit more. Um, so yeah, uh, before we get into this stuff up here though, before we get into that, um, I wanted to take a moment and discuss a couple of other things. One, uh, the kitchen thing with a bit more, actually, I just realized we could run that line all the way through here, uh, or to this doorway. If we don't put any doors here, if we put doors here, you know, um, Actually, what would be kind of cool is to put a hatch here, maybe, depending on how our room structure goes, uh, but to put doors here and then have all of these lights tied to each door so when you opened up, the, the lights came on. That would be kind of fun. Um, but there, there was mention, again, by Jimmy Carter that we could just keep this area kind of like the galley type thing, and that's true. Um, like I mentioned before, that cubby works really well for it. It kind of just fit everything. We might want to change up some of the stuff. Um, another mention was by Photo Loss, I believe it was, to remove some of the background stuff and put in more appropriate things. Um, because you can actually take this stuff out. You can't mess with this, the actual circuits of the, of the ship. But you can change the backgrounds here. So, for example... Um... I don't really... Oh, uh, we could do plant matter. You could do something like this, but all along here, and then that's because this is kind of like a uh, agricultural area. Something like that. Which I do kind of like the idea of. It would make the areas feel a bit more unique. Um, there was a couple other suggestions regarding that, like having dirt or more plant-like stuff for the growing area. I forget if there was a recommendation for the storage one. Um, and then like a, a CIC or a tech area where it's all just a bunch of circuit panels and things in the background, which I kind of like that idea. I feel like it would make the ship more unique. My idea, though, to still maintain some uniformity is to do something to this effect where... Um, actually, with the exception of these pillars inside the room, I would probably keep them... Uh, I'd probably get rid of them as well, but basically keeping this border around an area. Um, and then that way it would kind of maintain that this is still part of the ship, but it's like a themed part of the ship, if that makes any sense at all. Um, oh, I could do it up here. I could show an example up here. Um, 
So kind of like this, but then also getting rid of that middle beam kind of thing. And then that way, yeah, okay, the windows are actually part of the background. That's weird. I did not know that. Oh, you learn something every day. So something to this effect. And then let's just say I need something that has a lot of blocks. Uh, I don't really want to use wood. Um, screw it. Let's do the scrap panel. Why not? And then basically do something like this. Where it, it would essentially be the entire area, like all the way through the actual area of the, sp of the place. Um, but it would basically still have this little border around it to kind of keep the fact that you're still on a ship. It's still like made out of metal or something to that. Actually, this doesn't look too bad for just something like down here. I do think I might go with plant matter. Um, just because it actually does feel a bit more planty, for lack of a better term. Whoa, what is that? Bonus damage. Okay. Speaking of damage, there was a comment, or part of the comment by Photoloss was that the Violium broadsword that we looked at in the last episode can't actually be upgraded because the upgrade takes it to a tier 6, and the Violium broadsword is already a tier 6 weapon. So once we made, the, I guess the Solus was a tier 4, five or something like that by default much like this one which by the way I, I looked on the wiki and saw the upgraded version of this guy that's going to be the next thing i upgrade because that thing looks nasty um but so anyways the violinium sword would be around on par in terms of tier i don't know i didn't actually remember which one they said was actually more damaging um, or had a higher DPS or whatever, but technically the Violin one would not be able to be upgraded, I suppose, from what I understand. But, two things. One, I may, uh, I read an article, or a forum post, rather, that talked about, if, even though you're not on a multi, if, like, even if you're not playing a multiplayer game, uh, like a, a multiplayer world or whatever, like, you're not open to people, you don't have anybody in your party, the universe on your system, I guess, is still shared amongst your characters. So essentially what some people said, because some of you may know where I'm going with this if you're like Starbound fans, I don't have, at least I don't think I have, the um, broken broadsword anymore. I figured it was broke, busted, got rid of it. I'm pretty sure that's how that happened anyway. I've checked my weapons crates and stuff. I can't find it. If I've got it, it's, it's, it's buried somewhere, but... I don't have that many chests to go through, and I can't find it anywhere. Um, so my thought process is that it was probably broken, I probably chucked it. Um, this is another one that can be upgraded, apparently, according to, and so is this one. Um, actually, technically speaking, most of these can be if they're not already a tier 6, but these were unique uh, weapons. But uh, the broken broadsword can be taken to the Baron and repaired once and then again and it becomes like a tier 7. It's the only tier 7 weapon in the game that doesn't necessarily make it the best weapon in the game but it is the only tier 7. And of course my initial reaction was how the heck do I get another one because I don't have- well anyways I read a forum post that said if you made another character like a human and they got the thing as soon as you had access to your ship you could warp down put it in a crate or a box or something and then go back to your main guy, note the coordinates, go back through the galaxy map, go to those coordinates, go back, and you'd actually still find the chest in question, and you could access the thing. Probably gonna do that at some point, I'm just saying. Um, I mean, the way they put it in the forum was it's not really cheaty because it's another fellow protectorate that just left their weapon behind, and I'm like, that's very true. Um, and totally not a cop-out at all. But the other thing that I didn't realize, I was on the wiki researching this whole Violium what can be upgraded thing, and I ran across a lot of weapons that looked really cool that I don't have. And my first reaction was, how do I get these? So I found out that a lot of these missions we did once, and there's the option to revisit, I'm gonna try this real quick with this one. Now I know we're OP for the the actual mission or whatever. 
Um, but apparently, there's a 10% chance that some of these bosses in these missions will drop unique weapons. The one I'm going for here is the Erceus Eye, which again was something that I had not even seen before, and when I saw it, I was like, hey, what is this thing? And it fires a laser beam, and it's just some cool stuff. Um, also, another thing, uh, is that I don't know... Ooh, we can scan this stuff. Well, that's cool. I don't know if, um, if you didn't complete a set of armor from one of these missions, if that would actually, if going, coming back through and playing it again will actually allow you to get them again. I'm not sure. Uh, I imagine it would, uh, but I really don't know to be honest. It may be one of those that once you've missed those, you may have missed them. I'm not sure. Um, nope, don't want to sleep right now. And I think for this time, since we're a little low on time, I think we're just going to burn through this. I'm not really going to mess around with make sure we find all of the items or anything. But I've never replayed one of these, so I don't know how this is going to go, to be perfectly honest. Other than we are way overpowered for these guys. Um, that's, that's pretty much the only uh, thing. So, I don't know how this is going to go. But, if it's true that you can go back and replay these and get some of the boss weapons, I might be doing that a little bit. Just saying. Because, um, obviously it's way easier to do this now. Come on. Nope. Walk <laughs> I was gonna say, walk over that little grenade pellet. Um, the other thing is apparently there's also unique weapons... Oh, there's a blueprint. Oh, I already know that. Well, that's underwhelming. Um, apparently there is also weapons unique to space encounters. They're rare, but they do happen. Um, some of them are pretty cool ones, like a high-tech assault rifle and stuff like that, but there's some really cool, uh, weapons and stuff that you can find. Quite frankly, I'm growing more and more impressed with the overall, um, ooh, like this. High-vis jacket. We'll take it. Um... Overall, I'm growing more and more impressed with the level of, um, uh, not even detail per se, but content. Like, the level of hidden things and RPG elements to Starbound and stuff like that, while also balancing a creative Minecraft Terraria kind of system as well. Um, and they've just added more as far as, like, now there's the whole space station and there's trading and, like, they just kind of keep making this a huge game in terms of all the little things you can do with it. Um, now there's mech battles and, like, it's, it's kind of an all-around, like, there's a ton of crap you can do in this. The only real, I think the only real, um... Not, not even downside, but, um... Uh, gate, I, I would say, or wall, like not a paywall kind of thing, but kind of the same uh, entry gate type of thing. The only thing that I could see kind of turning some people away from playing it um, is some people like, for example, uh, my good friend Caden Red Pearl loves 2D side-scrolling games. In fact, we want to make them when we do our own games. That's the, this is the kind of vein or style, I'd say. Not like RPG and, and sandboxy and buildy, but like the 2D side scroller, multiple um, screen layer window, you know, that kind of thing. Multi-navigational, not like, not like a Mario where it's left to right, old school Mario, but like, um, kind of like this, where you can go up, down, left, right, different rooms, different doors, stuff like that. Um, but the thing that, that bothers him is he's not a pixel art guy. He hates pixelated stuff. He's like, I want crisp HD 4K stuff. I don't want, I don't want pixels, you know. Um, so stuff like that is really the only barrier. 2D or pixel art is really the only barrier I could see that keep people from getting into Starbound as like a, um, really enjoying it kind of thing is, is that could be a, a style choice that kind of puts somebody off. Um, but for me, I don't, I don't mind pixelated art and stuff like that. Um, wait a minute, this is the way I came in. I'm lost. See? Can't get lost in a left or right linear game. 
um, one, I will say this though, I, I was, I, I mean, I didn't end up doing a video series on it because, um, everybody didn't really seem as into it when I, uh, mentioned doing a series on it, uh, but one of the most impressive 2D games in recent memory that I ran across is Hollow Knight. I loved that game. Still do. The fact that they announced, like, some more free DLC in their new update kind of made me want to just get back into playing it again, because I played the crap out of it. Um, like, I did... I think I ended up doing a 100% run trying to get the achievements and things like that. Um, I think I did it in, like couple of weeks or something like that of just kind of like almost every night playing it whenever I could type of thing. I mean, I wasn't playing it like a, like I would typically play something like Fallout because at the time, it was around the time that my dog was having some of his medical issue things and I wasn't always able to just sit down and play. Um, and I'm getting turned around again. So I didn't really get to play it like just non-stop like I would have wanted to. Uh, but it was like it was good enough that every opportunity I had um, Where I wasn't busy like recording or doing something. I, I was playing Hollow Knight. I was really liking that game still do um, I think it was a really great and and again in the in the modern age of everything being some triple-a photorealistic based looking thing Is he a bad guy? He's a bad guy Man, he's still He's still powerful. Um, but yeah, in the wake of everything doing that, it's fun sometimes to see like a, a Hollow Knight or a Starbound uh, or a Dead Cells. Dead Cells was another one that they're 2D. They're not photorealistic. They don't. They're not going for the most realistic graphics and everything. But they're just fun games. It's kind of like the developers actually remembered what it was like to be a kid and play the old Nintendo and Genesis and stuff where it was like, you had the most outlandish stuff in those games, by the way. You know, now everything has to be, like, based in something realistic, and back in those days, you had the quirkiest characters and the weirdest stuff because they, they weren't really worried about making anything that was photorealistic because everything was pixel art. You know, it was like, we weren't, we're not gonna get any photorealistic stuff. Um, and I do feel like, just as a little bit of a game commentary thing here on the industry itself, I do feel like the industry has lost some of that a bit, and it's left to these indie developers like, um, Chucklefish and, uh, what was the, what was the company for Hollow Knight? It's, uh, Cherry something. Oh, I can't remember their name. Um, anyways, but yeah. That's one of those things that you see a lot of indie developers doing the 2D... Oh gosh, I don't even remember how to fight this guy. Something about all these little... things, right? I don't think that hurts him. You have to turn these things on. Eh. Right? Oh, and then I get... Yeah, then I gotta get down... Uh-oh. Well, at least when he spawns those guys, it won't be as bad. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We don't actually eh. we don't actually shoot him. I wonder if I can. Don't I have a phase ability? I wonder if I can blink through it. Oh, now that would be interesting. Do I always blink backwards? I forget. No, you blink forward. Yeah. Woo. Uh, what is this one? Whoa! 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 That one's moving fast! Alright, let's try this. I want to see if this works. Oh! Oh! That's awesome! Now, it's not going to work with this, however. Alright. So that kind of works in a pinch. And that works too! Alright, alright. Like that! <laughs> How you like them apples? 
Alright, I gotta get on this side of it? Destroyed the monster. I was trapped in. Okay, that's cool. Anyone else in the mine? Make it out. Give me, give me my weapon. No. Hmm. Bummer. All right. So I don't know if you. I I feel like the ability to replay the missions kind of makes me think that you can. Oh, here we go. So this is the loot chest you get at the end. The Urkius Horror. All right, we had that. Uh, wait, we do have that entry, right? Yeah. So we'll take this instead. So I guess there's a chance in that chest that it'll drop, um, that it'll drop the, uh, do we, do we get Arceus from this? I forget. All right, whatever. Um, so yeah. I'm guessing that if you replay those missions, there's a chance to get those boss weapons, because some of them are really cool. There's like a staff from the Kluix guy, um, there's a the eye thing from that guy, which you get the little laser beamy thing, which is pretty cool. But anyways, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.